But what I want to do right now is look at some tips that some people have brought up here. This article right here brings up a couple of things from leaderquest.com. Leaderquestonline.com is where I'm at. It says seven tips for getting into IT with zero experience. Let me see if there's any of this that I can agree with or stuff that I think you should know. Re-examine and apply for your past experience in IT industry. Yep, that's what I just said. And it's just to kind of read it real quickly, like a little part of it. It might seem like to you like you have none of the skills that you need, but soft skills can be surprisingly important. Exactly. Soft skills are like non-technical skills because we need people who can talk to people. You know what I mean? Customer service people are very good at talking to people. They, they have training. And this, it says, for example, if you are looking to start into help desk position, a common entry level IT role, things like communication, customer service, familiarity with Microsoft Office. Yeah, those skills are you can put on your resume. So right there, you use your past skills, put those on your find out. And see, that's the reason why you have to dive into IT because you don't know anything about IT. Once you start diving in, you'll start finding, well, I've done this before. Put it on your resume. If you've done it before in a professional, see, you don't even know, you don't even realize how much experience you already have in IT or even IT security. If you've ever done IT training in your company, if, if you've ever been in any kind of company and they gave you access to a computer, more than likely what they had to do is sit you down and say, okay, um, here's the things you don't do on our computer, right? When you log into this computer, when we give you this account, here's the things you don't do. So you have to have some kind of standardized security awareness training. Um, some of that training that you've had to use, like whether it's you had to have an account made, you had to uh, do anything with the computers. You need to look at what you've done and put that on your resume. But as you dive into IT, you'll be able to realize things like, okay, audit logs are super important. Logging in and, and account creation, having an account is super important. Training is super important. Policies are super important. There's certain aspects like when you look at security, normally from somebody from the outside looking in, they look at a IT person. All they think about is a person taking a computer apart, putting it back together. Or a person staring at a computer and typing stuff into the computer. I don't even know what what they're typing. <laughs> There's so many things that go into this field. It's so big. It goes in often all these different categories and some of them are not even technical to be honest with you not even that tech one example of that just kind of go off on a tangent here is is called project management also known as program manager or project manager those two basically are very needed in many different um, it roles uh, it units will use a program manager or a project manager to manage giant projects that are going on they don't have to be technical they have to know very little about IT stuff because they're not diving in the weeds. They don't have to know. They have to know some of the terminology. They have to know how to work. So, yeah, they have to know certain things related to the project, but not not super. They don't have to be super technical because they're not in the weeds. All right. So let's keep going for with this thing. Get IT certifications. This is actually something a lot of people do when they contact me. They say, hey, Bruce, I got this A-plus certification. How can I get a job? I've been applying for jobs and I can't get one. It's actually a really good step forward because it's showing that you have the initiative. It's showing that you have learned, you're learning a common body of knowledge. You'll start to realize in things you've actually done. Like if you actually take the A-plus certification, you actually take the Security Plus certification, any of those certifications, you'll start to think, well, you know, you'll be reading through it, studying and stuff, and you'll be realize, damn, I've done this before. And that's the kind of stuff you want to put on your resume. You know, so there's so many different aspects of it. As you learn more, you'll you'll start to realize what you've already done. So it kind of mentions a couple certifications here. It says entry level certifications like the ITIL certification, CompTIA Security Plus, Network Plus, Security Plus. These are all good entry-level certifications and some people will hire you just off the strength of that but they do 
want you to have some level of experience more times than not but some entry level jobs if you just have one of those certifications they will hire you that said you have to apply for certain certifications you can't apply for a junior level cybersecurity position with a just a security plus and no experience it won't work I mean, it says junior so you're like oh it's well it's a junior certification no listen so there's different tiers here all right so and i wish let me see if i can show you like a visualization so you can get an idea of the tier system that you have itil kind of does a pretty good job of showing this let me see if i can find that itil is like a a library of different processes it maps out different things that have to happen within an information technology within the information technology in, in any large organization they have this great breakdown of the different tiers that you have and I'm looking for some there's a lot, a lot of maps and stuff here here's one let me just show you what I'm looking at here they have this really good breakdown of the different levels that I'm I'm thinking of right now that is really good at showing you like where you should really start because you can't start in the middle and with a, just a security plus or an A plus you got to start from the beginning think of your own career you know think of your own career somebody can't just walk in off the streets and then suddenly be in the middle you know what I mean this looks kind of like what I'm talking about yeah, this kind of looks like it. Let me see if I can get a better picture of this. This map is kind of what I'm talking about. So here's ITIL, and it breaks down different aspects of an organization that has IT services. And that's, that's what ITIL is all about. When you start off, you're not starting in the middle. You're not starting here. You know what I mean? You're not. So a lot of jobs that you that people say, hey, I've been applying for all these jobs and I can't get in a job. They're applying for mid tier positions like they already know. OK, I'm not a manager. I, I'm not a middle management. I'm not going to be able to. But what they don't realize is that the job they're applying for a lot of times are middle. You're going to be on like a service desk type position. You're going to start from the bottom. This is where most people start. Even if you go on a program manager, which has which has no technical very little technical skills I should say because you do have to know like office when Microsoft office and the Gantt charts and stuff like that but which you can learn very quickly but even those jobs that's non-technical you still have to start from the bottom and so that's what this is kind of kind of showing here the service desk has a many different layers on top of it even service desk gets extremely advanced all the way to management you know, who answers directly to the CIO and, and higher management positions. But you got to start from the bottom. And how do you find these positions? Let me show you. So if you go to, just go to Google. Like, we don't have to get fancy. Let's just go to Google. If you type in entry level project manager. Let's say we were going for a project manager job. Just Google. It's going to go on your local, wherever you're from. It's going to start from there and you'll have a bunch of entry level positions starting from where you're from. If you're willing to, willing to move, you'll find way more positions if you're willing to move. If you're, if you're flexible in, in location. Some of these project management jobs are actually are actually uh, work from home positions as well. You can get find these from uh, work from home. But here's a couple of entry level project coordinator, project manager type positions. They're going to tell you what they expect from you. And most of them are, look this, one, one to two years. You know, you can apply for it, but they're saying, look, we expect you to have some experience. We expect you to have this kind of bachelor's degree, you know. So there are still things that you, caveats that you need to, to, to have. Yeah, that's just to give you in a nutshell, like that's, a couple things on the list of a person with no experience trying to get an IT. Let's just read a couple more here. Your degree in another field may be a huge asset. And this is true. Like a lot of positions in IT will actually take science degrees. They'll take engineering degrees that are not necessarily computer-based. 
And let me just read a little bit. It says, you may be tearing your hair out with regret, wondering why you used all your time in college to get a degree that isn't helping you in your quest for a long-term career. Many employers are more inclined to offer you a job because you have accomplished that feat in earning a degree. Instead of focusing on how your degree may have cost you money and, and blah, 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 focus on ways your degree can help apply for moving for a degree moving forward in the IT career field. Yeah, I would say this is true. Like, especially if you have a technical degree, not all degrees are going to help you. If you have an art degree, it's probably not. I mean, unless you're doing like uh, AutoCAD or something, or if you're doing engineering and you need to learn 3D modeling, then that might art might help you. But if you're doing straight up IT fixing computers, or if you're science degrees might help you engineering degrees might help you just being completely honest not all degrees are going to help you out but they're saying here in this article a philosophy major i think this is a stretch <laughs> a philosophy major uh has a deep understanding of a logic and unique way of approaching challenges i i guess don't know about that i just tell you from my experience normally when Companies are hiring people. They're looking for technical type degrees. A philosophy degree, I don't know that it's going to help you. So I, I kind of disagree with this portion. What you could do if you have a major in philosophy, you have a master's degree in philosophy, it could help you to get an IT degree. Go back to college, get a minor in IT, and you, you know, you're doing less classes, but you're going to still get your degree faster, provided they accept your, your previous credits. Okay. So be open to start from the bottom. This is absolutely important. You got to start from the bottom, right? If you have zero experience, you got to expect to come in and learn. So super important. Can't start from the middle and think you're going to get a job. You need to type in entry, go to Google, type in or LinkedIn or wherever you're at. Type in entry level position and this entry level position and that. Especially if the thing is, if you have, if you were trying to get an entry level position in network engineering or in beginning in uh, security, it's probably not going to happen. Because once you get to networking or servers, or if you get in the, it, it's kind of a, a the next step. It's another tier. It's another support tier that's very specialized. You have to start from the bottom first, which is help desk, customer service, you know junior level help desk positions is the best way to get that experience but you can also volunteer too okay so don't forget the power of networking talk to people you know if you happen to be at a job and you you know there's an it department and you want to get experience you're in a gold mine especially if the company allows you to help out what i would do is if i was so hungry to get into this field is i was willing to work extra just to learn not to get paid not over time just to learn because i realized the value of experience and it's really paid off in the long run it's a long-term plan that i had and it worked teach yourself relevant technical skills also very important absolutely you got to get in there and once you do that you can actually use that to put some of that stuff that you've learned on your resume by saying familiar with this familiar with that meaning yeah i've never done i've never used this thing before but i'm familiar with it i've read about it i have a lab at home that i worked on i'm familiar with it you know you can even say that you have a lab in your house where you take care of a, a splunk system that's collecting logs on 45 different virtual systems you know what i mean like you can you can put stuff like that on your resume um, look for crossover positions. Yep, this is what I was talking about. You happen to be in a field, they might have a, an IT workers there that you can go and ask them or ask, see if you can laterally move over there and start learning stuff. Some companies will allow you to do that. So a lot of the stuff that they talked about in here, I actually have talked about in this free course. It If you happen to be in entry level and you have no experience, this is a great opportunity for you to dive into this it's about four hours i think of video and and uh, slides presentation and stuff like that you can watch it at your leisure 
on all devices. Go ahead and go check it out. And it's free.